Async programming is super critical when you're considering high scale capabilities. Rust has asynchronous programming, but it's not for free. There's a lot of paths and options and the documentation is split using asynchronous runtimes that are built into Rust or through imported libraries like Tokyo. This gives you the ability to run a high concurrency, leveraging the hardware to its most potent capabilities. It's community members, Aaron Turon for doing this. While there's a really great path forward with async, you have to find it. Just like any language when it's released, you make iterations on it and over time, the outdated documentation just kind of sticks around and the best practices of the time of previous moments are not taken into account that they should be using new approaches and the new technologies and the new paths forward. There's a core effort to bring in asynchronous programming standard into the language with the async STD library. So there is one true, seems to be the ultimate choice of moving forward with Tokyo. Tokyo is the one that everyone seems to be using it. Though it's not completely for free, you still have to make considerations when using any of the async libraries, especially when it comes to multi-threading, multi-CPU capabilities. How do you safely and securely pass data between the threads and between the different processes running? The good news is there's all sorts of cool ways that are built into the Tokyo runtime that allow you to exchange data between the different threads. You just have to figure out which one's the right one. One of my favorites is multi-producer single consumer, where you have a lot of workers pushing data into a queue, and then you can consume data off of that queue to do work in the background or other kinds of scenarios, but it can go both ways. Two of those pushing in either direction. And the good news is they make it really clean and easy for you to implement. There's no baggage or overhead of syntax. This makes it really easy to do things like shared state across different threads. Really, it comes down to architectural decisions. When do you use which of the ones of the data structures for what kind of asynchronous runtime? You might not even need to use asynchronous runtiming, depend on your workload. Usually though, our workloads these days are built on API development. So you might be using something like an Axum web server framework, which lives on top of Tokyo to create a high scale, highly concurrent API endpoint. So when you need those high scale, highly concurrent scenarios, use something like an Axum web server and the Tokyo framework. However, if you don't need that scenario, there's no real good reason to use an asynchronous IO. Just sort of sit back and use the distributed nature of Rust's runtime with the standard standard MPSP or other kinds of distributed framework workloads across CPUs and things like that. Either way, Rust is really, really fast and it does a really good job at making sure that your application is going to be stable at runtime. This is why us at PubNub, we've developed and are moving forward with Rust's advanced capabilities. Not only does it make things faster, it also solves a lot of our coding problems and challenges as we evolve our products going forward. This is because of Rust's compiler and its ability to help us make sure we deploy good clean code. Though you can still make some mistakes here or there, it takes care of the majority of the problems.